Hey, welcome today to uh, UX Live. We have been um, at Adobe all week this week looking at different designers and their processes and how they make things using uh, Adobe XD and beyond. Uh, my name is Samantha Warren. I'm your host today. I'm here today with uh, Nick and Ian, who are video game designers. We're learning a lot about their process and how they work. I'm really excited to dig in today because I hear today we're going to really see something come together. It's all going fireworks to be like, today. It's going to be... The crescendo. <laughs> um, so uh, before we dig into uh, to moving forward, I'd love for us to give a little bit of a recap on sure. what we did today. We're also holding a contest. Um, anyone who is um, interested in creating a um, an Adobe app with XD or an app using Adobe um, XD, um, three screens. Uh, the, ch the theme today is um, entertainment. Uh, so go ahead and drop that in the chat pod at the end of the uh, episode today. We'll be choosing a winner. Um, the uh, fine gentleman here will be choosing the winner, not me. Um, <laughs> so I look forward to, 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 to digging in. Let's, let's talk about what you One did yesterday. Person. Yeah, so uh, yesterday, well, to come up to speed in, in its entirety, we built the uh, front end for our game Gobstoppers, um, which is our Halloween themed game. And uh, we've kind of got like the uh, the front end here um, built out with the loading screen. We did character creation yesterday, um, and uh, we used Nick's uh, Kevin Hel Little Hellraiser character and did a little paint over. Um, Nick also finished up the uh, the main screen for the um, uh, logo and the press yep. any button with the nice background and everything. So we got to kind of see that process in action. Um, <coughs> and today we're gonna be diving into HUD and inventory and maybe a little uh, skill screen. Um, we'll see how far we get. Um, and HUD for people who don't know at home, because that was is, a new term for right, me. Right, right. So it's heads, up, it's heads up display, which is usually for like, um, things that you'd see in like fighter jets or you'd see like uh, as a projection in a car or things like that um, but in this case it's uh, it's 2d graphics usually adhered to the screen overlaid on top of a 3d world or a 3d environment sometimes 2d um, uh, even Super Mario Brothers had a HUD because it's the, the coins in the corner yeah. is basically it's HUD it was very simple but and that's a really interesting design challenge too because you have to 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 design for really important aspects right. of the interface, but without getting in the way of the right. game. Right. If you're low yeah. on health, you need to know that. Or um, if if you have to get a certain amount of points, or there's a timer or something, it has to be very clear, very visible, but then also not obstructing anything and not in the way. Um, so it's uh, UI is always tricky that way. It's the it's the thing that you need to have there, but you don't ever want to really see. Yeah. <laughs> Because if you notice it, it's probably bad. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I guess we'll just get started. Um, we can just kind of drop in a new artboard here. And we'll kind of just kick around in here. You're starting to do the HUD? Yeah, so I think I'm just going to dive straight into the HUD stuff. Um, so we actually have a 3D environment to use as a background. Um, and I'm just gonna kind of uh, plop that in as uh, a starting point. Um, Nathan's actually asking, why are you using grayscale? I was kind of curious about that too. Is there a reason why you're, you're using grayscale in so, particular? So a lot of times when I'm designing wires, um, it's about functionality and not about the art. Um, Sometimes the way Nick and I work together um, or the way uh, we'll work with clients is we're basically when we're doing the wires, we don't really care what it uh, what the art of it is necessarily. Um, we'll hint at it at times. Um, but if there's an established art direction, we'll do a little more art in the wires. It just really depends on the, the client and the project. But it's really about speed. It's about focusing on functionality of the screens and about doing iterative changes as fast as possible. Because all I'm trying to do is convey an idea. And I want to convey that idea to somebody as fast as possible. And if I'm sitting there worried about pixel placement and how many pixels this button is from that button, it makes it the whole process a lot slower. 
Um, and I'd soon as use a whiteboard at that point because that's really just take pictures of a whiteboard and send that. It's just as effective, uh, except for with XD, I can be just as fast as I can on a whiteboard, but then I can also uh, send stuff over to Nick, and Nick can work on mm -hmm. stuff. We can go back and forth. We can prototype, um, we can send links. I have, it's all usable digital. Yeah. I have usable content, and I can also send it to the client, and the client can make edits. Um, it's very easy to draw a box. So. Um, that's kind of where we're coming from. It it's just about speed and and getting ideas across as quickly as possible, um, and being able to iterate really quickly. From from my standpoint, um, not having color in the wires too also reduces one piece of information that we need to have any discussion about in the mm. wireframing yeah, stage. Yeah, right. Um, because people will get caught up on colors. Yeah, they will. Everyone sees. I mean, it's it's sort of like <laughs> even some of the designs ends up changing when they get to the art because then everyone sees kind of the full vision of it. And um, that can actually change, go back and change how some of the design works too. Most of the time, if the art changes to the design, we just noodle with it in the art stage. Like, I would say, unless it's a pretty severe rework, um, we're talking about we're talking about the flow isn't changing. We're talking about like placement of some things on the screen change. At worst, Ian, you'll go back and update the wires to yeah. be the correct placement, but yeah. we won't we won't really uh, usually thrash back and forth that much. Larry is actually asking, why did you all pick up? Uh, PS over Xbox or PC? Oh, it was just, it was random. It's arbitrary. <laughs> it was totally arbitrary. It didn't yeah. matter. Uh, we could have done PC. We could have done Xbox. It really didn't matter. I just threw those in there because I had them. <laughs> designing for consoles is actually a larger challenge than designing for PC. Um, tool tipping, uh, yeah. you can't do. I mean, you, you can you do, can. but you can't it's do... Just... You can't do tool tipping the same way you can on PC. Yeah. You have to explicitly call out actions and buttons on console. Um, Navigating is harder because you only have a thumbstick or a D-pad to navigate, mm -hmm. as opposed to you just a mouse. You just go to the thing and point and click on yeah. it. So, we we tend to, if someone, if a client is building for both console and PC, we tend to build console first. It's the harder one to solve for, mm -hmm. especially because of size and spacing. It's um, it's a seven foot rule, and you're on a TV, so you have lower resolution than a PC, PC typically, uh, and the person's seven feet away, from, at least uh, yeah. seven feet away from the monitor. Yeah. So if you have to squint to see it, it's probably small. Yeah. <laughs> um, and yeah, we I built this uh, little console controller buttons in XD uh, for both Xbox and PlayStation, as long along with some generic ones. Um, and we'll we're like when this stuff gets put up, um, we'll include this as well, so you guys can have this and use it if you'd like. There's actually a question from the community that I was thinking about myself. Um, you know, a lot of designers, they they have a relationship with the engineers that they're working with. And I think especially in web design, there's kind of like a lot of, you know, there's like Scrum and Agile. I'm curious, does that exist in the world of gaming? And yeah. how, what does it look like for you all to work with a developer? Um, I would I would say that, well, since, since we're contractors, we work with usually whatever production pipeline they work with. Um, Obviously, our, our goal is to help them with their game in their timeline as soon as possible, exceed timelines if we can, because we know how the video game industry is, so we can get ahead of things and get ahead of problems. That's mm -hmm. always ideal. Um, we just we are fairly aggressive with the way that we do our milestones, so we tend to work. We work with their producers. We work with their teams. We figure out how to get things landing with their internal milestones, and then we make our own milestones. Usually our, our process is probably, I would say because we're contractors, I'd say it's a little more waterfall than it is agile. But if it's a yeah. longer project, I think there's a little more wiggle room in there. And I think that we, we can, we, we usually, the, basically the longer the project is, the more integrated into their production process. We, gotcha. We, we yeah. So it, just like any other, you know, app or website, you're really working on with the engineers depending on the way that your, your client works. Yeah, I mean, we work with we work with engineers. We mostly, I would have to say, most of our point of contacts is usually uh, someone in production mm -hmm. and someone on the creative side. So it, this is our typical two point of contacts. We we get approval through creative, whether that's a design director, or an art director, maybe mm -hmm. both, um, or a production director, um, production director, making sure that we're hitting our milestones, doing things on time, everyone's happy, we're signing off on things. Um, and then engineers usually come in, and they're usually informed in the process for a longer process. So the engineers know what's what's happening. They can ask questions. Mm. We we've built these systems so many times that actually we we keep the engineers a uh, 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 time in the back of our head. Mm -hmm. So usually when we make a suggestion, we go, "We've made this decision because we know how complicated it is to do option B yeah. for engineers." 
And if they're like, we still want that, that's totally fine. We'd like to put that up front and make sure that their their, their time is of some of the most utmost consideration. Interesting. Somebody in chat was just mentioning my, my left and right uh, sticks were reversed. My dyslexia is showing. You're correct. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I fixed it. Because it's going to annoy me now, so I have to go back here and fix all these things. So, um, <laughs> as you're fixing that and setting up your file... Yeah, um, yeah somebody was asking if this was blocks as well. Yes, I, yes so, you're correct. Very yesterday, astute. Yesterday, we, um, we, as part of our process, uh, you know, for, for just coming up with assets for this project, um, I modeled uh, our, our little buddy Kevin in blocks. Um, now we also we're doing a HUD. We need a scene from them to be in. So I went into blocks and I also modeled uh, a cute little scene with some houses and some some fall leaves and some trick or treating and stuff like that. So this is this is basically just a screenshot out of blocks of uh, what that looks like. So this was all modeled in VR on an Oculus Oculus Touch controllers. Um, I did this in probably about four to six hours, somewhere in that time range. Um, knocked it out. These colors are really bright, A, because it's all actually Blocks has. They only have really kind of pretty bright pastel-y colors. Um, and uh, second, it's not gonna matter when I put it into a renderer. Those are all gonna tone down, and I'll show that in a second. So I usually get the scene together. We knew it was gonna be kind of like a suburban street scene. Um, obviously, some of the angles and the way the shapes are done, you know, the trees and stuff, very angular and stylized. You know, um, Blocks is really good at that. And then we put some pumpkins and stuff to make it look like Halloween. Obviously, if we had more time, we would do much more Halloween-themed stuff, maybe some skeleton silhouettes like that are hanging in the windows and hey, stuff. Chris, so can you turn my screen off for a second? So, Sorry. so the idea is that I'm, I have these windows and I want those windows and the street lights to be emissive. So I'm, this is actually going to be a night scene. It looks at the, at the daytime now. So we're going to make this a night scene. So what I'll do is I'll take, take my model and I'll import it to Sketchfab. And we talked about that yesterday. So if I bring it into Sketchfab, um, it pretty much looks like this. And I kind of get my base level of lights. I put little lights in for the, for the street lights and I put, um, put some emissives onto the pumpkins and uh, some of the some of the, some of the uh, here we go yeah so this looks a little darker on the monitor I, I guarantee you there's actually midtone values in here um, and I'm gonna be pushing those midtone values up a little bit when, when I get to the to the to the final PSD but so this is basically I get it to this point and this is when I'll send Ian a screenshot and go like here you go you can start building a HUD on top of this I have my angle I have my lighting and this is what I'll be bringing into Photoshop to do a little paint overs on um, typically someone again will will give us an environment from the game they're making and we'll we'll go in and paint over it to kind of make it sit settle in sometimes the, the lighting's already done and we don't have to do anything and we kind of just slap it in but since we were building this project from scratch we wanted to make sure that we had some content to go back there so just a brief overview went in blocks went into sketchfab and then now i'm going to bring it into photoshop and do a little bit of paint over and bring up the midtones and values and and that'll be our backdrop for our for our hud and our game right um we also uh have a couple other characters that we're going to be bringing in. Um, one of them is Alice. So I made a second <laughs> character. Uh, Alice is, yes. Menacing. She's yes. menacing. Uh, she's a little girl with a trick or treat uh, um, bucket. And a, she is obviously Jason themed um, with the hockey mask and the machete that's dripping blood. Hopefully um, fake blood. Of course. Or Hershey syrup. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? Freaked out either way if she runs up to you on the street and says yeah. trick or treat. So, um, between her and Kevin, which is uh, our uh, let's see, here. little Hellraiser guy, little Hellraiser guy here. <laughs> those are the those are our two characters. So those will be representing player one and player two in our game when we build our HUD. So uh, you know, where we go here? There we go. So I you know I went into blocks and you could see the arms and everything. I, I just neck knocked this out real quick because I'm gonna do a paint over in Photoshop. Yeah. But that's him. Like I'm gonna superimpose these onto the screen and then. Ian will show you kind of what that super imposed looked like, and then I'll we can kind of flip back to me as I kind of paint up the scene and yeah. kind of get it ready. Yeah. So on my screen, I've got my. Uh, I've, this is what the uh, the final comp was that Nick is going to be building, um, and I just grayscaled it so I can do uh, my HUD wires right on top, um, which I'm actually going to use a little bit of color in here just to kind of call some some things out, um, and just so they don't get totally lost in this. Uh, background because it's a little bit dark um but yeah so uh i'm just gonna kind of start drawing in bits um for this stuff um there's a handful of things that need to get represented on here 
uh, enemy health, enemy level. Um, these are like our little gobs back here that are coming after our poor kids. Uh, <laughs> um, and then uh, player health. Um, since this is an action RPG, there's going to be like a level up. Um, and so there'll be some XP and stuff. Um, and then there'll be an action bar and we'll have some um, uh, buttons on there for the controller um, and it'll be PS4 unless everybody wants us to do Xbox I can do Xbox instead um, <laughs> um, and then there's gonna be a little candy bar up here um, it's just a ridiculous term uh, which will be like a um, a timer for how much candy is left in the zone and the kids are trying to uh, get all the candy from the gobs before all the candy is taken out of the area and then they lose um, and Halloween is ruined <laughs> so as you're doing that maybe I can answer some questions that are in chat sure um, that are popping yeah, up it's flying um, by what uh, so I see at my eyesight's really bad at that it, what, what's his name um, is it Jack Jakari Jakari Ross yeah. um, uh, it, he was asking basically uh, how you know, how does one, uh, what suggestions do you have for a graphic designer trying to transition into UI? Um, actually, you're in the perfect field to transition to UI. Uh, graphic design <laughs> yeah. is usually a pretty good marriage moving into it. First, number one, the first thing I'm going to say is, is, the, is the fun part. Play a lot of games. <laughs> play a lot of games. Play, I mean, play a lot of games. And, and when you play them, analyze them in a different way. Yeah. Like, play them from a more analytical side. What UIs do you like? What games have, have bad UIs? Kind of start getting your own mental base of what you what you enjoy and what you don't like. Um, and start st strictly just copying the things that you enjoy. Like, if there's things in games that you like uh, and, and you find good from a UI standpoint, like, print those to memory and, and, and use them later. Uh, this It's one of the best, uh, using your, you know, using reference is one of the best things you could possibly do when doing UI. Uh, with with anything creative, I mean, having references is, is. I think we live in a world now where you can literally just go search anything, and you have like this plethora of information and past past uh, experiences that you can kind of pull from and yeah. watch your... watch YouTube videos of stuff that you're interested yep. in creating. Watch people paint icons. Watch people paint backgrounds. Learn about you know. Uh, the painting side of stuff as well as the graphic design side of things even uh, lessons from photography and stuff like to harp on the the rule of thirds and and everything else like you would frame a, a like you would co uh, compose an image yep. um, it's the same type of rules that you would use for composing good graphic design yep. too um, so you know lost my cursor. that and um, you know just 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 practice practice other things outside of just graphic design the number one thing that will make you be valuable in UI is learn how to paint mm -hmm. traditional art. Yeah. Um, go do some figure <laughs> drawing. I know th these are the basics. It's the stuff that stinks to do over and over again. Just do it, do it, do it. Learn your value tones. Learn your colors. Learn your complements. Learn why they're being used that way. Learn visual hierarchy. These are, like, I think I said this yesterday too, 101 art yeah. school stuff. Like, stick to it. It's really good stuff. Don't peel off of it. Um, Did you go to art school? I went to like three art schools, but I never graduated any of them. <laughs> so did you did you learn a lot of this stuff on your own, or how did, how did you trial go by about fire? That? A lot of trial by fire. Um, a lot of it was situation. someone being like, "Can you do this?" and I didn't know how to. And I said, "Absolutely," shook their hand, and then went yeah. off and learned how to do it. <laughs> yeah, well, so that's actually a really interesting thing. A lot of people don't realize that that's how people get into doing stuff. They kind of agree to something outside of their comfort zone yep. and learn on the job. Yeah. If you stay comfortable, you're it. it it, it's much less likely that you're going to move to that next thing that you desire to kind of go to and aspire for. Yeah. yeah. That's where everything exciting happens is outside of the comfort zone. Yep. <laughs> um, someone's asking, uh, right before that, someone was asking what we used before we used XD. Mm. Oh, which man. I think, which I think is, it gets, it gets really rough. I mean, there were, there obviously, uh, Azure, um, there was there beforehand. Um, Sketch was there a little bit. Um, beforehand, I, but it was I Mac only. I just Photoshop a lot of times, yep. um, uh, which is rough because uh, you end up doing a lot of destructive uh, work or just using vectors, um, uh, which isn't so bad. Um, it, it can work. Um, it's just not as fast as XD. Um, what else? Uh, I use I've used Illustrator before as a wireframing tool. I've used XD um, or uh, XUR. Um, uh, balsamic mockups is another uh, really uh, quick one, which isn't so bad. Um, PowerPoint, 
PowerPoint was I, used a lot. A lot. I mean, like, like you can just do quick click throughs. It's just everyone knocks it. Simple. But PowerPoint for very many years was well. Not only that, the accessibility of people outside of creative fields. Yeah. Everyone knows PowerPoint. Yeah. So if they want to make alterations to it, they actually know how to use that software. So yeah. they can jump in and do it. it it's again the, the whatever tools are best for the job and gets and communicates the fastest. Yeah. PowerPoint actually worked more times yeah. than not. Or whiteboards, <laughs> like White we've mentioned before. Like there's plenty of times uh, where Nick and I were working on projects, and we just had to sit down and like bang out a, a, a complex flow of stuff. And s like sitting at computers was too slow. Yeah. <laughs> and we because we needed it it's done not, in like two hours. That conversation. And it was really complex. Yeah. And so um, and there was just constantly like building UI. Oftentimes is a lot of trade offs. So you're coming up to a problem and then you're trying to decide like, okay, well, is this trade-off more, is, is this trade-off better or worse than this trade-off and which one is, fits the theme of what we're trying to do or the, um, the, the purpose, is it more user-friendly, is it harder to use, but it fits the theme better so we kind of like the way it feels or it's, um, it doesn't follow the UI conventions that we've set up before, mm -hmm. so it just doesn't work as well. We've trained players to uh, expect certain things and then we're just flipping the script all of a sudden. Is generally, we don't like that as much, so we try to keep things consistent too. So. Do you ever uh, do user testing? Yeah, yeah. Um, so when we were at, at Blizzard, there was a, a, a bit of guerrilla user testing yeah. where we just bring in friends and family and stuff to test stuff. Um, there was also more formal uh, settings where um, we would do like one-way mirror style, um, where a few people are sitting behind a one-way mirror and there's a microphone and you're talking to the person and they're basically in an isolation booth yeah. uh, playing a game. Um, Have you ever like changed up in a, in a design like a UI pattern that's fairly familiar to gamers and then like totally seen like what happens when yeah. somebody actually I mean, uses it? Yeah, I mean even just wa like watch Twitch. Uh, if if uh, you end up making a game and people are playing it on Twitch, you just watch people curse just, you yeah. constantly <laughs> because you did one thing and they were expecting something else and then of course you're like, well next patch we're gonna fix that how, how often do you actually try and like listen to users and make changes versus how often do you just go with your own gut to innovate i think initially we probably tend to go with our gut although we do a lot of like uh walking things around to people and and showing people like hey check this out uh, i'm gonna just walk you through this design and you tell me what doesn't make sense um, or sit somebody down with a clickable prototype and say, and give them a handful of goals. Uh, can you uh, dress your character? Can you figure out how to equip this item? Um, and then just watch them struggle and don't give them any any input. And then they they will show you where your design sucks. Yeah. <laughs> because they won't be able to figure <laughs> something out or they'll be clicking in the wrong place. And you're like, oh, well, I shouldn't have used that icon there because that led them to believe that that was going to do something it doesn't. Yeah. Yeah, do you ever go to the natural environments? I think that's an interesting question, I, like versus bringing people in. Oh yeah, that was uh, like in-house study is definitely something um, that uh, we've done at Blizzard. Um, not us personally, but like Blizzard had people that did it and we had feedback and, and stuff. We worked with those uh, usability teams. Surprises um, where you like get in there and you find out somebody's playing a video game like in a really, like hanging from a weird hammock, like something strange like <laughs> not that. Not necessarily you're like, wow, that, no. We didn't think about somebody doing um, this. <laughs> it, it is always interesting to, um, it's definitely a more val valuable set of input, I think, yeah. uh, in terms of feedback, just because they're in a comfortable space they're in their own space right and they're using their own computer and these are the things that they're going to be uh using when they play your game usually so it's uh it's nice to see that they usually also will do like journal like they'll do daily journals okay, and stuff yeah. like that so they're doing they're not actually talking to a developer so it's an interesting thing to um especially when you're working with big publishers and stuff like that um people are like 
sometimes shy about hurting other people's yeah. feelings because they don't know who they're talking to you. Like you could be the person that actually built this and then they're telling you that your work sucks and <laughs> then it's this awkward social thing, right? Um, so <laughs> yeah, it, uh, it, it when they're just talking to a camera, they don't have that. So they can just tell you, this sucks, change it. And then you're That's like, oh, okay. That's the best stuff to hear, <laughs> It's right? really straightforward. <laughs> yeah. So I think we're going to take a few moments to take a look at um, a few of the um, the uh, submissions that we have right now for the, the contest that's going on. If you're just tuning in, um, we have a, a contest going on right now, uh, Design Three Screens of an app that's entertainment related. Uh, we'll be giving a, um, a free CC uh, license away at the end of the, um, the, end of the program. Um, this is actually the first one. I believe this is uh, Majid. Uh, submitted this app um it's a movie app it's uh got some nice design elements going on here it feels very familiar um going into it you have a like a little preview nice oh, and nice. clean nice and clean gets you right into where you're you're going initially see they flip the orientation yeah there's a little so bit of a flip yeah. of the orientation that's nice i mean that's how you view a movie <laughs> yeah so I, I like that they do that where it kind of like goes straight to it that's nice um the next submission we have actually it isn't um entertainment related but uh we're going to take a look at it anyway um barber <coughs> cuts and cocktails i like the the typeface they're using here there's a lot of different like interesting elements <laughs> being brought into this first barber as bar 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 yeah. bar 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 the barber it's barbara um, again, love this typeface here, but it's a little small, I think, it's a, in some It's a little hard to read. Yeah. Even the even the text underneath it, it's a little probably hard to read on yeah. a phone. It might be nice, like, at this screen to maybe just focus in on the, like, icon or to kind of bring go in. Go a little more simple. Yeah. Um, One element. Yeah. Um, continues a guest. I like how that slides in there. Um, this screen, I like this nice like um, element that they brought in. Yeah, it's nice to the different um, the different headers. Um, nice list view. Um, it doesn't quite scroll, but you see here at the bottom, it looks like this is a loader. Oh, it's actually it's an indicator hmm. around an offer. I think that's a little confusing. That yeah, that I didn't really get that. I mean, I like the feature, but yeah. I didn't really get. That, 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 that's what I was trying to point to. The feature is nice because I like the way it slides up like that. Like Maybe it's icon a little vignetting behind it to push it off the background. Yeah, something. I think that would be really helpful there. Um, but overall, it's it's uh, um, the app itself and the design feels really nice. Um, I like this kind of uh, top menu bar area. Mm -hmm. The iconography is really simple, clean. Um, but I think yeah, this here is a little confusing at the bottom. Probably the biggest issue is scale. Everything's very small. Yeah, I think scale, I think there could be some improvement there. This typeface, um, small, and that black background mm -hmm. is a little hard to read. Um, but there's some really nice elements here mm -hmm. as well. Um, so the, those are the two submissions we have so far. We're really looking forward to getting some more today. So if you have some time, you want to put together three screens around an entertainment app, we'd love to take a look, give you some feedback, um, and you'll be entered to win a free CC license. Awesome. You gotta love that. You gotta love that. It's a great prize. <laughs> Perfect. And stay focused on Ian's screen because Ian's Ian's doing the the XD work today and um, putting together the HUD elements um, right now. Um, if I had to guess what Ian's doing, because um, I already know, so I'm just pretending like I don't know. Mm. Um, he's putting. <laughs> He's putting together uh, party frames, which are otherwise known as, you know, you, you get a player portrait in there, right? You get the head of, of, uh, of our characters. Good old with Kevin. Good old Kevin and Alice, as we've named them. Um, you get their, uh, you've got sort of an adrenaline ability bar or a special meter. That's, um, our, that's his XP. That's his XP then, bar. And then right. his health. And then his health bar. So. Yeah. And I'm going to put in, this is Kevin. Get that in there. Get use all, our good old friend Questarian. Yep. Can't spell for some reason. <laughs> Oops. There we go. Thank so you, as you see, as Ian's doing this, this is also, he's he's kind of skewing the corners. Mm -hmm. He's, he's, he's taking a little bit of direction of conversations that we've had already and we know the kind of look and feel. So Ian's already taking visual liberties 
Um, I would say traditionally, if I wasn't, I hadn't worked with a UX designer before, these liberties would, I'd be uncomfortable, a UX designer <laughs> taking these liberties. I, I would, because... But because you, you both have a really great relationship. You've been, for those who ha- weren't tuned in yesterday, yep. you've worked together for a long time. Yeah, yeah we have. Yeah. And we, we, we're good at telegraphing. Um, we, we say, it's really dumb, we say a lot of things in stereo a lot of the times, it's, and it's just it's true. sound like an, it's like an old, old Mary. couple. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to say that. We just did it. <laughs> Live, it's too adorable. Right here. It's ridiculous. <laughs> um, <laughs> it is ridiculous. <laughs> Uh, but so, I'm I'm really comfortable with Ian making some of those calls. And if he doesn't, there's there's, the, if I go, I really don't like that. It's like it's a conversation. Too bad. No. <laughs> Too bad. <laughs> it's done. I'm not redoing it. I spent hours on it. Um, so it. it but I didn't because we're using XD and everything's fast. Yep. So yeah, and and that's another thing to point out. Even if we have to go back on something, it's, it's fairly quick in XD to just go back and, and kind of reiterate and fix some things up, move some things around. So this will be Alice. This is Alice. That's Alice. And Ian's just putting in like dummy levels for them. And we do this a lot for clients too, right? It's kind of a snapshot of like gameplay experience. And sometimes what we'll do is we'll go, okay, this is when you're about five to seven levels into the game. Mm -hmm. Um, Characters have some abilities at this point. Mm -hmm. We're kind of maybe in level one, level two of the game. Um, That stuff is just for context. It doesn't really matter because what we're trying to do is go like, this is not when you're just starting the game. This is not when you're at what we call end game. (laughs) You Mm -hmm. know, so like we're kind of trying to somewhere in the middle because we're trying to kind of get all the parts that uh, kind of kind of really matter and kind of a straight down the gut shot of of all the elements that could be on the HUD. And there might be some things as the game develops too, like, oh, there's a special meter that comes up, or, oh, there's a special frame for a boss that you that you, you come into. Yeah. Um, so that does happen. We, we definitely alter and change it. And sometimes we have to, we, you know, you only have so many corners to put things mm-hmm. in too. So sometimes you kind of <laughs> have to, do we replace UI and put something else there? Is there something very similar to that? Does that UI need to be always present? Mm-hmm. At least until somebody develops a hexagonal monitor then we have more corners yeah then we have more corners and more things to put into. <laughs> so i think uh someone's asking here if you collaborate within the same canvas one of the things i've noticed is that you you kind of are going back and forth almost like playing tennis a little bit between mm-hmm. different apps yeah. between the two of we you do. how yeah. do you divide up that collaboration um it, sometimes it's, it's depending on like what we get from the client what stage we're at um, we try to not block each other as much as possible obviously if one person's doing something and the other person can't uh, it's just wasted time that a person can be doing something. We, we, we try to be as efficient as possible with our time. So when we initially scope and do a, a scope of work with, um, with a client, we try to make it so that those deliverables are matching up so we're always kind of handing off things back and forth. We leave time for iteration. Um, but every now and then, I mean, you, you know, something will go over or take a couple extra iterations. So we, we kind of do have dead periods. But um, I'll sometimes give things to Ian so that his wires look more robust and he'll 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 give me updated stuff so that I can go in and start doing art. We definitely and by the way, handing stuff back and forth is literally screenshots in a chat program. Here's a screenshot, take it, yeah. boom. Um, Use Dropbox a lot. Um, yeah. Our main chat program is Telegram. It's really yeah. fast. We just dump things into Telegram. Uh, Brian's asking about After Effects and whether or not you ever like mock up elements for animation in order totally. to like show what that would look like. Yeah, we totally do that. Especially if it's like mm-hmm. um, sometimes uh, clients need like really robust understanding of like specific moments. We call them ceremony moments. Um, ceremony so moments. yeah, it's like uh, because you're you're pulling the user through a ceremony which is like leveling up uh, for example your character levels up so a bunch of things are going to happen in concert so uh, one example would be like you gain a new level so uh, a, 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 a visual effect will spout out and you get a bunch of pretty particles and stuff on your character and then maybe there's a big like level up text that pops up over your head or maybe it's a dialogue box and then after that, you you might get um, some things popping up, like you've gained a new skill, things like that. And these things are all stepped uh, and staged so that the user basically knows what's going on, for one. But it's also that ceremony of... It, it's the... Um, uh, the that uh, very strong... Um, uh, happy effect you get when you've accomplished something big in a video game. So you want to have that um, those ceremony moments be 
you know, you're turning in a quest and you get like the nice pleasant sound yeah, yeah. or um, so do, you uh, beat do your both high, high you score in Flappy Bird. Do that animation? <laughs> like who, who here does like... We, we both do After Effects. Yeah. 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 We've both done stuff in After Effects before. So. Yeah. So sometimes it's whoever has free time will just take it on and, and nice. do it. Um, good example of ceremony, and there's quite a bit of thought put into this, especially at Blizzard. Anyone who's ever opened a chest in Blizzard or done anything where they've received loot, or even Zelda, the Zelda, do 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 do. Like those are very iconic moments of ceremony moments where you pause and take a moment to celebrate the thing that you just gained. Um, Blizzard has very they have beats for this stuff even yeah. like how how much something will pop 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 bam, and pop open anyone who's played overwatch sees that with loot crates um and this isn't just the blizzard the game companies use this all the time there's yeah. usually a three beat to the ceremony and then whatever information needs to be around the ceremony to tell you what you've received Oops. so those are those I'm, are I'm fun. really excited about that like i'd never really heard of that idea of ceremony moments but mm -hmm. i'm sure that there's a lot of parallels you could draw within you know any real experience that you design right yeah i mean it's it's sort of a it's it's sort of a the, the last chapter to the thing yeah. that you just did and it's really important to give you an, an ending and then and then let you know you're beginning a new thing yeah cuz no, no matter who you're designing for i mean you could apply that to any like app or website any experience from end to end like you're you're really trying to make the the person using it, the hero. Yeah, it, it's all. It's also, oddly, one of the uh, moments where you're actually taking the UI and putting it in the way of the user yeah. in, on purpose. Um, and it's not. Uh, that's not something you tend to do a lot, uh, except for with the exception of like modal dialogues and stuff. But mm -hmm. that's user initiated and stuff. These things sometimes happen uh, at unexpected times. You level up, you weren't paying attention to your XP bar, and all of a sudden all of this stuff is happening, and you're, <laughs> yay, gold's raining down on you, or whatever, right? It's the surprise moments that are, that are fun as well. Um, so I'm gonna drop some buttons in here. I'm gonna do PS4, just cuz. Sorry guys, they're made. <laughs> I could do Xbox, but it's weird because then I have like uh, I forget which buttons I I am. Oh, you have the Xbox there. A B um, X Y there. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna use. I'm not gonna use X. I'm gonna use uh, circle, square, and triangle. And my yeah. See, the triggers were in the right order. <laughs> But right, the left, joysticks left, right. were yeah. incorrect. Also, too, I can talk a little as you're putting that final stuff in. I can mm. kind of talk about um, a little bit of what I would do in the HUD. I'm not going to go piece by piece because this stuff is, is, you know, if people have questions about specific things, I can go into. But here's kind of where we ended up as a final um, our comp. And I can just kind of go through and talk about kind of how we ended up here. So, as you can see, I added in color tones, I added some fireflies and some some flies around the lamp here, right? Um, just soften some of those colors, a lot of levels and color values, added some bloom to my brights, um, tone things back. I did create this 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 creature, or, which we called the gob, um, quickly in Photoshop, just by drawing, drawing with my marquee tool and filling in and adding some glows. Um, this is just one of those where like it's just fast character design it's not the best character design typically if someone comes to us with an enemy they put a lot of thought behind it <laughs> and a lot of concepts and they played around with it i just needed sort of a sort of an ominous dark entity enemy that kind of ish. steals ish that steals candy <laughs> and you got to defeat them to get candy back you know it's it's uh there's usually a lot more thought put into it um when a developer is doing it but i really wanted to make sure i brought out some of the mid-tones which and then do some focal blurring so as you can see, it's just did some focal blurring around the edges um, and added more saturation towards the center. This is actually um, a tactic used Oops. in Diablo um, where to bring fo focus towards the center, you desaturate and do focal blur towards the edges. It's something that most people don't know because your eye, when it's only focusing on fast action in the middle, doesn't really notice. And what you're trying to do is reduce cognitive load, and reduce information on the screen around the edges. So because they don't matter unless, of course, you see movement but you, your eyes will always pick up on movement, the, the actual information that's there. You could almost have someone focus on the middle of the screen and make the edges black and white, and someone wouldn't notice unless they looked at the edges explicitly. So 
it's it's kind of it's a little, little bit of a trick to bring the eye naturally back towards where your characters are running to and where the where the focal point should be so um i didn't show that because it, you know it would take a little while to kind of go in and, and do all those those edits but these are just simple simple things in photoshop uh, uh going in and painting on levels in fact i can just show kind of my level breakdown and i did make this uh, this background a smart object i put my characters on top of it but the whole background is just in a layered smart object here and i've got my fireflies i can turn on and off here right so i just those are just outer glows and color overlays on a on a folder of of just a bunch of little circle polygons you know not a ton of just to blend them in right um i believe my outer glow sometimes i put on overlay no it's just normal there sometimes i'll do it on overlay uh blending mode um i've got the flies by the lamps you know same thing just i have uh all my flies which are just little smart object flies and then i've got a little bit of softening right um, and these are just like painting techniques right you learn this as you just practice more traditional art sort of where you want to draw the eye where the contrasts are values uh, we've got alice and so with alice as i brought her into the scene i think this is this is this might be kind of interesting um i have her as a base layer but then um all of my shadowing and everything so that's how I brought her in from blocks and then I manually go in and I, I'll paint out shadows and pull down saturation to just set her in the scene um, there's this is definitely one of those uh, it's look it's all done I just went ahead and did art on it and <laughs> she's setting the scene this is just a lot of years of understanding lighting and where things go I mean here I've got a light right it's pushing generally in this direction um, and so I can set her into the scene. And sometimes we do have to do these mock-ups to show a specific moment. We'll go, just give us a bunch of screenshots of characters, and we'll, we'll cut them out, and we'll throw them in, and we'll kind of create create these scenarios. Because here we wanted to show, you know, anytime you're playing a multiplayer game, we wanted to show feet circles, right? We wanted to show that yeah, there's... I'm actually there, doing them in XD right now. Doing them in XD right now. So, yeah, so Ian would do those in XD to kind of show that process, and then we would kind of convert them back. This is an indicator. Back the indicator show which play who's player one player two yeah. i'm actually this is on top of him so i'm just going to mask this out right in here burp, burp, burp. super simple kevin is the same thing i put him in here and then i just and these are all for anyone wondering these are just clipping masks on top of uh my, my base layer of kevin with a shadow underneath them so I'm just going in and adding shadows. He's much more subtle than Alice. He's a little farther from the light he's, because he's back in 3D space, a little farther back. Um, I do have these bounce lights in here. You can see that just pulls out midtones, um, which is really important to note that like, I, I showed this yesterday. Anytime you're doing scenes like this, it's important to check out in black and white. Are things reading? I have my enemies as the darkest value tones. Uh, I have my characters, they have bright spots on them. The color pushes them off too, but then the rest of, you can see the rest of my mid-tones are actually coming through. My brights aren't, you gotta watch your whites. It's like watercolor. You gotta watch your darks and you gotta watch your whites. You gotta make sure they clip so that, that when you really need a black and you really need a white, you need to, you need to blow those out with an effect or something, they really pop. There's so much, it's interesting because you mentioned painting earlier. I mean, mm -hmm. there's so much of what you're doing here feels like you're creating a it's, painting. It's digital painting. Yeah. It's, it's a lot of digital painting. Um, and I, I, I do have to say, like, I, I worked with some of the best artists in the industry when I was at Blizzard, and they were very generous with showing me tips. And I came out of there a much better artist than when I went in. Um, uh, they, they have, they, they the, the Blizzard art style carries a bunch of really traditional methodologies with it, um, with, with with how it does lighting and values and softness and tones and exaggeration. Uh, those are all things that like are just easy to wave your hand and go, yeah, just do this. Um, it, it just takes a lot of years of, of failing, failing, failing at it, and then it kind of starts clicking and you kind of get it. So here we got, I got the feet rings in there. We got buttons in there, we got enemy health bar, we got party frames. I'm just gonna knock this out real quick and then uh, Nick can kind of start arting this uh, content. So, I'm just gonna do this. 
this real quick. So yeah, we've got our candy bar, which pretty much represents our special meter, something along those lines. And Ian's basically just going, it's gonna be kind of a candy bar here. Um, Ian's definitely implying some things here in the art, which which I like. And you know, if, if this was a longer timeline, Ian and I would have already had these discussions. I think it's important to reiterate that about like, we got this fun style, it's chunky, it's easy to, to see. Um, there isn't a lot of, you know, you got a game that's that's maybe a much more traditional RPG or, an, or a massively multiplayer role-playing game. You've got something that where you you have filigree and you paint it out. Um, Diablo was was one of those games when I was painting a lot of that stuff. It, it it's it's concrete and the value tones are pushed so far back. They're not bright, um, con concrete and and ironwork and and everything's chipped and aged and that stuff takes. A ton of time <laughs> it's layering and layering and layering and layering and UI you know of course goes through iteration so when you you move a feature around you got to repaint those frames around that and kind of kind of accurately depict that stuff so it's it's uh, this is definitely an art style that we could pull off uh, right now and I, I, I also think it's I, I like the art style I like simplicity as well but I also like when something's nicely done and rendered and and feels tactile and Eric is actually asking um what would you like to see in an update from XD do either of you have any feelings about like you know would there be any like specific tool like in your if you could ask the genie the XD <laughs> genie for anything um I so the one thing that I know is not easy I'm gonna ask for it anyways and always do is 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 uh, real-time collaboration mm. so the, yeah. the two of us can actually jump in and work on XD files together um, just because I could go in and finish art and paste these backgrounds in for Ian mm -hmm. and go and do all that stuff it it, it, it sound it's 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 a hu I know it's a huge ask for a feature because you're talking about network code and, yeah. and, and a lot I we understand the, the weight of that feature but that that would be a great one I would say um, uh, hover states would be fantastic. The ability to show hover states, just uh, like a basic state machine in general, mm -hmm. would be mm -hmm. uh, that would be great. Would be nice. Um, another one is uh, some some way to do simple animations. Right now we have mm -hmm. to kind of annotate yeah. animations yeah. through yeah. clickables, um, which takes uh, takes literally us being there to tell them to do it. Sometimes, like oh no 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 keep clicking and it kind of shows you the animation and, and unless we kind of explicitly call it out, but now you have UI on a game and then you have but this stuff is not part of the UI this is annotations and we kind of got to it's, it's a little more education and I, I, I wish we, we could just kind of do some animations when you went to the screens and it would be, oh okay that's happened the arrow points to the thing or the, the stars come off of it mm -hmm. or and they, they could be crude yeah they, they could be we talked about we could just even dump gifs into there it would be great just little simple yeah. looping gifs Sorry, I was becoming distracted watching the the, the candy the bar materialize. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like wow, like as it happens, it's always exciting to see so, the yeah. repeat tool yeah. being used. Speed, speed, speed. Um, yeah. Yeah. So that's just kind of a little cheat. Uh, so I'm just gonna copy this up here, and then stick it underneath as the candy that's gone away. Something like. And just so you guys know, uh, uh, we're definitely shotgunning through a lot of this stuff. Yeah. Um, Sorry. It. Yeah. It's. It. It. I know that it's some of it's kind of flying past really quickly. Um, but uh, it's probably better we get through a lot of this stuff and show you all kind of like the extent of it. And you guys can ask questions where you want us to slow down. What did I put that at? Thirty-eight percent. Okay. Needs more candy. <laughs> more, more candy. More candy. <clears throat> Definitely needs more candy. You're like almost halfway out. So yeah, there's our HUD, more or less. Um, and what I really like what Ian did here is he like took the like the ability icons that are down at the bottom have this sort of like gnarly skewed look to them, right? They're kind of like they're pulled in different corners. Um, same thing goes for the, the health bars, right? I, I, I when I looked at this, oops. <laughs> you know, if I was Over giving your smaller at the top, if I was giving Ian feedback on this page. I would say like this is I, I like how I've I've got basically four four chunks of elements and I can read them 
uh, really nicely. I've got my uh, party frames, we call those, over on the left. I've got my health bar on the top, top middle. I've got my candy bars, my special meter. Um, and then I've got, you know, my, my ability icons at the bottom. Like, it's, I feel like, you know, as a game player, I can understand this visual hierarchy pretty easily. Yeah. And I know you're doing this today to show us your process, but realistically, how many times would you actually design this stuff? Would you go in and just automatically, you know, know all the things to design, or would you come up with a few different options for it, each of these different elements? It really depends. Sometimes um, systems aren't even in the game yet. Mm -hmm. um, so, like, for example, uh, so, like, this big square over here represents, like, a, a super s a special ability, right? You pull both triggers. Um, it's not something you're going to do very often. It's going to have a long cooldown um, before you can use it again, mm -hmm. so you might be waiting a minute or so. It's not something you're doing all the whole time. Um, but, like, for example, in, in say we're building this game, that system might not even exist, right? Like that code might not even be it work. existing. Can you well, like design something and be like, it would be really cool if we did this? Right. So like that that type of stuff totally happens because we'll be playing it and we'll go, you know, it feels we need something that's more frenetic or we need something that's like really special that you can do once in a while or it's really cool to have this thing. It, it's a tactical element of it where. Um, I want to be able to uh, plan a specific ability or something to happen at the same time mm -hmm. or uh, things like that. So there's always things that you can do that kind of add to the game. Um, but even like in the case of RPGs, a lot of times um, you don't have all of the systems even in the game until mm -hmm. like six months before you ship it. Mm -hmm. um, so you actually can't even play the like play the game for real until it's almost done. Yeah. Um, because it takes so long for all those systems to become gelled together and working correctly, um, you it becomes very difficult to play the game from start to finish because those systems just aren't there. Um, if you don't have a leveling progression system in place, you mm -hmm. can't experience leveling up. If you don't have your skill sets all dialed in and all the what all the spells do and everything, you can't experience what it's like to make those strategic choices about am I buying this skill or that skill mm -hmm. where am I going to spend points um, if you don't have all your itemization uh, in the game you don't know how the economy works like am I going to spend gold on this or am I going to mm -hmm. buy stuff with candy and like how is that going to work out um, do you always design in the context of a screen like this or do you ever start to come up with like almost like a style guide like do you start mm -hmm. to kind of make those com component libraries but yeah. like you know you see a lot of times now for websites mm -hmm. but Again, there's the same sort of parallel here. We don't necessarily always have the liberty to have uh, um, style guides in that sense where we have like specific components. Um, because a lot of times, depending on the game engine you work on, um, there might not be scroll bars. And someone has to go program scroll bars for right. your game. Um, and how are they going to work? Well, you have to sit down with a programmer and mm -hmm. figure out, like, well, do we want endless scrolling? Do we want things to fade into the bottom? And all of those things have to be hand-rolled by someone. Um, and they usually the first iteration doesn't work the way you expect. <laughs> um, and it takes a little time for yeah. those things to get polished. And so it's a, it's a very iterative process. Um, and everything gets tweaked. Um, and even, like... We probably even did like multiple iterations on scroll bars because uh, on games we've done on the past because um, we didn't have like fading at the bottom and stuff, so we had to like do art fixes because things just didn't look right and um, that and last ten percent of game yeah, development. Yeah. I mean, an engineer can code in a basic scroll bar pretty quickly, but making it feel and look well, and that's that's another thing too. It's just, you got to code those from scratch sometimes. Yeah, like yeah. depending on. The game industry is changing a lot with Unity and, and uh, Unreal and a lot of... Yeah, those components um, are available. ...on on the, the asset stores and yep. stuff like that, which is nice. Um, and those are really useful. They're really nice shortcuts. Um, so you want me to spit this out over to you? Yep. You want me to give you the other one, since you kind of... Or it doesn't, or it doesn't matter. I um, just give you this one. You can just give me that one. Right. Put a black... Put. Oh yeah, you want me to? Yeah, because okay. I'll I'll kind of show. Yeah. So I'm gonna just fill this in black for Nick. Um, I'm gonna move this out of here. And I'm just gonna make this artboard. Um, I'm gonna move these two actually. Oh, I have it, so I can dump it in. Oh, okay, you already got yep. it. Magic. So, yep. So the, through the magic of <laughs> editing, 
Um, so Ian would basically just, this is how I request it to He just dumps out with a black background for me. Um, and what I'll do is I'll go, okay. Um, I'll take this in, dump it in on top here. And this will be basically be our UI layer on top of oh, our yeah. background. I forgot about the, uh, the candy, the, can the candies. Well, Ian also added a candy counter in there. Yeah, I'll save I you. I forgot about that. I'll just add it in yeah. while you're doing that. Um, and what I'll do is I'll uh, use a smart object. I'll just rasterize this. So I'm going to cut this up and just just place it. And what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to hit screen. It's a blending mode, so I can just go. All right. So already you can see, <laughs> I've already got kind of the basics of what Ian gave me already dumped on top of here. And because Ian's already taken some liberties with art, I don't have to think about how to render out some of these things. Some of these things are just going to kind of come naturally. So what I'm probably going to do is I'm going to take these elements. Screen. Create my ruler guide so I just have my simple. I already had that in there. Perfect. Um, so I'm going to be scaling these to about the appropriate size that I need them. Got my gutters. Now, another thing that's important to note my gutters when I do them are actually. I'm using this as the visual line. That's the visual line we see. It's not this. Even though technically that's where the pixel ends. For my gutters, I, that's where the visual line ends. So I visually see it when I zoom out and see these as a group. I visually see the cutoff point being there. So I'm, I'm right now doing basic just sizing. Getting things in there before I start doing art on top of it. Somebody was asking if developers make UI and UX decisions sometimes. Um, yeah, definitely. I mean, in terms, I mean, we're all developers, so um, it's we're working with game designers, we're working with 3D artists, um, and we're basically it's a big collaborative process, ideally. Um, so we're always making changes. Like uh, sometimes, even someone will say, "Hey, we need a UI element for this," and we may have a discussion about it and talk about it mm -hmm. and decide, well. Maybe it's better if this UI element, instead of it being like a HUD element, like on the screen in 2D, it's represented somewhere in 3D space, right? Mm -hmm. Where, um, uh, I can't think of a good example at the moment, but like, uh, there, well, that you might have like a collection thing where like you have to stand by a lamppost for a certain amount of time. And rather than having an element stuck on the HUD where um, there's like a timer or something like that, it might be a ring around the lamppost or there might be color where oh, it fills up the yeah. lamppost. So it's still UI, but it's, it's, in, a different dimension. it's, it's in the actual 3D art rather than in 2D art on the screen. And obviously we can't do that in XD as well. It's hard to, to um, kind of represent those things. Um, you can kind of get away with it, like kind of how I've done the rings around the feet. Um, and maybe you could do something to kind of represented something like that by putting a ring around the lamppost or tra tracing the lamppost and having it fill up or something like that. So I think we have a few more submissions that we're going to take a look Perfect. at. Um, for those who, of you who are just joining us, we're, um, we're doing a week-long uh, series of look at people's um, different processes and during that week long folks can every day tune in submit a, um, a an app at least three screens um, designed in XD today's uh, theme is entertainment there's a few submissions outside of the entertainment world but we're still going to go ahead and take a look at them and give them feedback um, and hopefully they can use that feedback for continuing to design stuff in XD so the first one we're going to take a look at is actually, um, it's a t-shirt app, and um, the f it immediately struck me when I saw this one, this, this landing um, screen, the beautiful illustration, really nice work on mm -hmm. the illustration. Um, it's nice that it kind of ties in with the, the, the um, typeface up there at the top. Um, but the interaction is kind of a little interesting to me. It's just click me. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and, and, and that per, uh, continues to persist through the app, actually. It's just a matter of going through and clicking on different um, T-shirts, which I think is really fun. <laughs> it's kind of like, you know, yeah. like the simplest form really yeah. of an app. But um, beautiful illustration, um, really nice uh, type to tie into that illustration. It's really honing in on the T-shirt. Yeah, it's cool. 
um, by kind of just going through some of these, and that just continues throughout the entire app. <laughs> just lots of t-shirts. Um, so overall, uh, nice submission. Uh, the next submission we have, I think, is from Jeanette, and she, I think, submitted yesterday as well, the Jolly Jumper app um, today. Um, first, initially taking a look at it, I think it's got a really interesting look and feel. It's got, like, a very playful look and feel. Yeah. Um, kind of a nice, loose uh, approach. It's like uh, kids' Crayola drawings a bit. Yeah, and I think that fits with the theme. Um, we jump into it, and it's all about, like, you know, uh, kids' jumper, what are they called? Um... Bouncy houses. Bounce, bounce, bounce houses. houses. Yeah, I saw it and I was like, wait a minute, what's that thing that I've always, like, they didn't really have bouncy home th houses when I was a kid. Right? I see we were them robbed. now. We were robbed. <laughs> I know. I see them now and I'm like, oh, I wish I could get in there, but then I'd be the weird We had adult. Chuck E. Cheese, though. We had the ball pits. And I think, <laughs> and I think kids pee in both of them. Yo. <laughs> See, my, my parents are always like, no, that is a germ. Yeah, 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 it, it is. It is. <laughs> it is. But it just, it just makes us all stronger. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we'll go with that. Um, so going through this app, um, I think it's nice that they did use like um, a typeface here that kind of harkens to the playfulness and fun um, joyfulness of the bouncy house, this kind of kids drawn dinosaur um, going through it. I think some of the things that there's definitely some room for, for simplification, I think, yeah. to really help make the app more effective. Um, the color is playful, but it's a bit busy. Yeah. A couple of different fonts being used here. Yeah. And, and we have a general rule, like, don't use more than four fonts on a screen. Oh, and, and, and that's usually and, two font families and, and different two, weights. Yes. Yeah. It's, two font it's, families and use weights to, to call out the differences is usually the the rule of thumb we tend to abide by. I would say uh, my biggest piece of feedback with this is if you're going to go the ki kids theme, it's it's a it's a razor's edge of like it you, it's really really busy. And I think that the, and I'm not a big fan of of like going right to black tones on things. Um, mm -hmm. I like when when you're basically either using a really dark purple or a really dark green. Mm -hmm. Um and those colors definitely can work together. That's the colors we're literally using. We're using the blues, yeah. purples, and greens for this. Um, and I, I just think there's just probably a lot of usage of font. But like things that look simple and look like they're made from kids that also still look buttoned up and professional yeah. take a lot of time. Yeah. They're hard to just knock out, I think, really quickly. I agree. Um, but overall, really nice submission. I'm um, excited to see that uh, she submitted again. Um, the next submission we have here, um, the XD Club. So let's take a look. Oh, I like this. It's a bit of a, a, a play on the theme of like the idea of a music app being kind of a club. Mm -hmm. um, opening the door is the first screen. Um, I think the feedback I would give the designer here would be like, uh, this background image is a little blurry. It, it's, I think, nice to use the blurry kind of mm -hmm. bokeh look with yeah. with um, photography, but when you get into the vector imagery, it starts to, to feel a little bit like it's a bit disjointed. Yeah. Um, let's see. Let's go it's into one pixelated. of these. The red on the background there, too, is probably not enough contrast. They could use either uh, a different font weight or uh, a more bold font. Yeah, I think maybe a little bit more of a bold font. Or maybe dropping that image in the back down a little bit. Yeah, to making add, it a little darker. A little so contrast. You get that contrast. Yeah. Um, but overall, nice theme. Uh, I think it's nice that it sticks with that entertainment theme mm -hmm. um, and, and does a play on the music, um, like a music app. Yeah. And then I think the next, the next submission we're going to take a look at is a ballet app. Um, it's very from, clean. Yeah, from Philip. I love, I love the typeface. Yeah. That uh, initial screen is very nice. That that first, I I love the simplicity of having so much kind of um, empty space mm -hmm. to really draw the eye into mm -hmm. the ballerina. Sure. And then the typeface really does kind of help feel like new it, movement. The really nice thing about this is uh, it's everything centered and the line from the top of her hand draws the eye straight yeah. down to the login yeah. and the logo right above it's it. Nice it's thinking. just very framing. Nice thinking here. Um, so uh, we're off to a good start with that first screen mm -hmm. moving in. Um, this like, is a really good example of rule of thirds. Yeah. We're using rule of thirds very well. Absolutely. Um, kind of bringing that logo down. I think the logo gets a little bit harder to read at a smaller size. It does. Um, but Could I like, maybe just move it up a little bit. Yeah. Uh, like bump it up in size just slightly. and uh, would bump, bump it up. Yeah. Bump it up. 
<laughs> I love these big chunky buttons though. Like these, I think yeah, this is really they're nice. Very nice. It's very readable. Yeah. Great font choice. But still showing um, that imagery in the background. Yeah. The the uh, description text down there um, is a little bit small. It, that's probably going to be tough to read on a phone screen. Um, but it looks very nice. Yeah, I think it's a little a little bit light too. Maybe a little bit more contrast, especially when you get into here with the yeah. sub, um, the sub head um, underneath the header. Um, but really nice layout. I think mm -hmm. this is very very elegant. Yeah, very well done. Um, so looks like they have a ton of screens in the game. Yeah, there's about eleven screens for this one, so it's it's pretty well thought out app. Oh, it, I, I like how they uh, dual tone the logo too, it, how it uh, dims on the sub pages where the sub page goes all black. So it if you click in there, it falls yeah, behind the, a little bit. Yeah, yeah I it's like nice. I like that too. It does like it really brings the content, content forward. Yeah. yeah. And even this, um, it's this is really important information here on the side, the 2017 18 season, but yeah. they do it in a way that's. Um, it's really elegant and easy to read, mm -hmm. um, even though it is kind of doing yeah. something a little bit different than what you would expect on a mobile app. Awesome. Well, it's great submissions. Keep them coming. Um, we'll check back in in a little while to, to check out the new submissions. Cool. Thanks. How's it going, Nick? It's going good. Um, I'm just starting to kind of... I pasted in a portrait of Kevin. Obviously, this is a different angle I just took in, um, in blocks. Um, I already did the paint over on it, which is basically just smoothing out some of the, the polys on it, pushing levels, making sure that, that, that rim lighting around him. That, that, obviously, with portraits, when you're framing them, you want to make sure that they kind of capture the character. Sometimes it's it's really good to talk to the developer, too, and go, you know what would be really, really cool here is if um, is if he was actually a 3D object there. And he, he reacted to when he got hit or reacted to when he got leveled up and made facial expressions and stuff. Those are usually little nice touches you put in there. But at the very least, you can just start out with a 2D plate in yeah. there of the character. So I'm uh, just going in here. And I'm starting to work on a little inventory screen for us. <clears throat> so today we're jamming through this stuff. Yeah. So this is uh, this top piece is just kind of like the little um, oops, um, the selection for inventory or skills, and you right bumper, left bumper. That's what these little indicators are on on the top there, um, and you would swap back and forth between those two screens. Um, and then I'm just gonna kind of uh, build in the content for that. I'm actually gonna uh, import Kevin back into here <laughs> to use as a do you always name the characters? <laughs> Sometimes. Or do uh, they come with names ever? Like they usually, yeah, they usually, usually, do. usually, like you know, we when we were working on Paragon or whatever, all of the characters are already they already have names and stuff. So we just kind of. Do you ever feel like they're just named wrong and you have to rename <laughs> them? <laughs> it, I'm sure they 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 wouldn't they wouldn't like that, especially if they already have an established IP. You really yeah. can't. Yeah. You really yeah. can't yeah. do that. Although Nick and I will come up with shorthand for stuff. Like nicknames. Yeah. 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 Like when I was work, I can imagine that when I was working with CD Projekt Red on Gwent. Yeah. Like if I were to rename your alt, like that would, <laughs> that be, would that'd be, not be good. I don't think they would probably like that. But, long hair uh, bro dude. And long hair. Just like what? Long hair, low voice bro dude. <laughs> Why are you renaming me? <laughs> Stop renaming me. <laughs> so uh, someone in the chat pod actually is asking, how do you actually submit these? Uh, these I guess you call them screens to developers like how, oh, how, yeah. how do we, you actually like yeah what is it what is that we talked about process? it in our first video which oh, you should nice. go back and watch uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah we we use paper on Dropbox um, okay. so uh, it's a really efficient way to do it because uh, we can have um, uh, clients that are um, just looking at their content uh, and it's all password protected and it's nice and safe um, and we can put up uh, basically wiki style pages and then dump in these content and screens. We'll use the wonderful XD uh, prototype links and we'll mm -hmm. embed those. Um, although uh, Nick did tweet uh, Dropbox Paper, uh, those developers, and said, hey, we'd really love to just embed uh, Drop uh, uh, XD um, 
clickable interfaces directly into paper mm -hmm. and uh, they were like well we'll look into it <laughs> so maybe that will be a feature maybe. in the future it would be really cool um but uh, and if they're watching you should do it uh, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely but, uh, yeah so we have that and then we'll drop in uh, jpegs and then we'll add annotations to the jpegs um, so basically you can go in there and comment and we'll have back and forth dialogue nice. on individual elements so like I'll put a, a, a annotation marker like on the little inventory button here and say this is the inventory selected state and then they can say I hate this don't ever do this again and I'll be like okay cool and I'll delete it <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just making like um, like four slots for um, Oops, I double that up on accident. I did. Um, for the character, like head, chest, legs, feet, or something. Um, that's kind of what these are representing. I have too many. Too many squares. Too many squares. Too, too many squares. squares. Uh, <laughs> do you sit next to each other and, and do this? No, actually, so it, it, we did when we were like working in. And we annoyed uh, everyone around us. We well, um, in Austin, right? Yes. Normally, yes. So yes. There's space between you. So, actually, people usually ask, "Is that hard to like collaborate across large distances?" So, first off, you know, as a typical working day back and forth, we'll just have uh, voice chat up, and yeah. we'll just be working, and then you know. We'll do stuff or we'll send or we won't have voice chat up and we'll just send stuff back and forth. We typically do reviews. I know this sounds in that video, you don't just awkwardly have each other. No, no, on we video. don't we no, don't have no. each other in video. It's just because usually we're like uncombed hair, <laughs> look a mess. We don't want to stare at each other, there'll be mugs anyway. Yeah. <laughs> I see I, I don't want to see him on video chat all the time. Please sorry. God, no. That's um, right, no offense. But when we do <laughs> I don't want to see you either, Beardo. <laughs> when we do when we do reviews, and sometimes when we do reviews with contractors, we this, this sounds a little strange. We go and use a program called Big Screen, and we do it in VR. And what Big Screen is, is we sit, we'll sit in a virtual movie theater with a big screen in front of us, and we'll throw our monitors to the screen. And you can point and, and circle and annotate like you were sitting next. Literally, I look next to him, and you can wave in VR, and oh, we're wow. sitting right next to each other. So it kind of closes that gap, and we can kind of, and actually, as you're talking, you see sort of someone going like this and doing the. Wait, the, so this is with certain clients that you have this? We do this internally. Just with each other. Just with each other or with some contractors that, that actually have a VR setup. We, we, we go, hey, just just hop on a big screen yeah. and we can do reviews that That's way. That's cool. And it's it's it kind of makes it more personal even though we're we're distributed. Yeah. It's it's a weird phenomenon in VR when you see another person that you know in VR, even though they're being represented by an avatar. Uh, you actually can recognize them by their mannerisms because they move their hands move like they move in real life So it's kind of quirky, but it's fun So yeah, are you using slack ever or is it mostly like sometimes? Yeah, we use slack a little bit I feel like um, you guys kind of take it up a notch when it comes to communication with the, yeah, the VR. Yeah, yeah it's um, we, we try to um, You know make it feel like we're working in an office together even though we're not <laughs> How often are you in the same location? Uh, on occasion, maybe a couple times a year. For events like this. Yeah, in events like this, yeah. Yeah. When we get when we go out to um, gaming conferences and stuff, um, we'll we'll spend time hanging out at like an Airbnb or whatever and oh, stuff. Nice. So it'll be like our remote office in some random house. <laughs> so uh, Tim. Um, actually just ask, and I think we've already covered this, but it might be good to, to just um, remind folks that um, how did you create the 3D models? Did you create them Google using Blocks. VR? Uh, VR and Google Blocks. Um, because I, I actually have a hard time with 2D uh, programs that hit. And Blocks, by the way, if anyone who's, who's played around with it, it's literally six tools. <laughs> so it's, it, it, in some ways it's kind of reminiscent of, of XD in the sense that they're, they're, the tools are distilled. Um, but the feature, like what you can do, is 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 pretty great. I mean, there's a couple features I would definitely want in blocks, uh, but it allows me to just throw ideas in a 3D space out there really quick. Um, it's really great for icons, and I can actually show that before the session ends today. Of like, we we made we're gonna make icons for this inventory screen that uh, Ian's doing, and we took just took a bunch of elements in 3D, made them real quick, and you can do quick paint overs on them, and they look they look gorgeous. Um, save a ton of time by just knocking out silhouettes in 3D. 
you know, if, here if we'd have like weapons or candy or things like that, we could we could just, just model those real quickly. Um, takes five minutes to model like a piece of candy or something and then rotate it to the angle, export it out, screenshot it, and then I can just cut it out and kind of go to town on it. So it's, it's definitely helpful. So I'm just oh, there we go. skewing these boxes, give them a little art vibe. <laughs> People making Count Chocula jokes in there in chat. <laughs> you see that, Nick? Mm -mm. Somebody called you Count Blockula. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> I'm a big advocate for simple, fast software that that allows me to push my process and my ideas forward faster. All about speed. And then once an idea is sort of locked in on and people enjoy it, then it's about refinement. Making skew little boxes. Oops. And I know red doesn't work, but red's health bar. Can't do much about it. Yeah. It's yeah. going to be all crazy colors on the green screen. It's going to flicker a little. <laughs> you could make it slightly orangey. I could, but... Is it getting all crazy? Mm -hmm. Just no. when it's small, yeah. when it's small, yeah, it actually it, really goes crazy. <laughs> I actually don't have it red. I actually pulled it into magentas because um, I love magentas yeah. um, a lot. So magentas and purples and... Heroes of the Storm is basically a good representation of shapes and colors that I do enjoy to use a lot, so... Um, we like the 80s. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of 80s inspiration. <clears throat> Stranger Things? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and... That was one of our uh, logos we had come up for... Uh, for our mood board. Yeah. Stranger Things. So I'm making, like, fake stats. Yeah smarts and then how hyper you are because candy <laughs> actually I need to make this background even darker da, da, da. you can actually use uh, uh, XD in VR um, using uh, uh, digital desktop, I believe. Virtual desktop? Uh, no, not virtual desktop. Or vir yeah, you're right. Virtual it's desktop. Virtual desktop. Um, it's like 15 bucks, and you can basically use any. It's it's basically like just taking Windows um, and putting it into a gigantic screen inside VR. So it's like having a 12 foot monitor in front of you. Um, and your mouse and keyboard works like normal, and you can just do whatever. Um, it's, uh, uh, I haven't actually used XD in it, but you could do it if you wanted to. <laughs> Make this black and then push this back. I'm also doing things here that should be considered mathematical. I should be doing them very, very mathematically. I eyeball a lot. This is also my talk about when I do things. I I I am very destructive in the way that I do them because I'm getting idea. I'm like, do I like that? And then I can go back when the client approves everything and says I like how that looks and prep it for the client, and make it a little cleaner and a little more aligned. Clean up some of the lines because those things don't they, they really don't matter when it come, when you're trying to funnel down an art direction or you're trying to funnel down what they like. Because then I'm not I'm I get less attached to it because I spent less time on it. Um, the client doesn't have to feel the pressure of accepting that, even though they know the timeline's short. Like we can kind of make pivots and iterations quicker. quicker. What would you say the average number of screens is that you design for a client? Um, it varies so much um, because. We'll do, vi we'll do dialogues and we'll do main screens and main screens will have so many different states mm -hmm. and um, yeah, it's just, it really varies. It, it depends on how deep that the flow goes and if we're doing front end, like 
a, a shop, for example, like digital storefront could be 30 or 40 screens oh, just wow. by itself. Yeah. Um, especially if we're doing uh, RMT, um, real money transaction, mm -hmm. um, payment processing. Yeah. Those screens are so deep. Like, yeah. you don't have a credit card. You don't have an account. You don't, and that's all the sign-up I mean, process. And it's just flow. so many screens. Yeah. Um, anybody that's designed a website that has to do that <laughs> knows those screens go real deep. Checkout um, flows. I know. Yeah, yeah. I know that. Yeah. yeah. So. It, it really varies. Um, that is definitely a, uh, something that web and app developers and game developers can empathize with each other. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's like those payment those flows, flows, those payment processing flows are always just payment processing flows. There's just certain things you can't get around. Yeah, that's where the... It's, um, here, you know what? Let me, let me shift that to the point that it doesn't flicker. Just on, for camera. There we go. Nice. Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Making it's a little more pink, but you know what? Making Chris's job easier. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so, at this point, I'm getting pretty close to done with that element in there. All right. So we got kind of like to pull out of the scene and see if like this is kind of matching in. I definitely want higher contrast, higher saturation in my UI. I want that to push off the front a little bit. So overall. I'm Pretty happy with that. Um, my greens here, uh, I pulled from my logo in the beginning. Um, you can remember on our home screen. These mm -hmm. are just, so we're repeating some of the same color tones. I, I mean, we really want to make sure that these contrasts still stick throughout the game, right? We want to make sure they feel like they're cut from the same cloth as we're kind of going through these screens. Uh, I think we're doing a pretty good job. I think that, that looks pretty good. Um, and that's... Kyle in the chat pod is, pod is asking about like what does the process look like of actually like exporting these specific like vectors and graphics, um, you know how is it taken how are they brought into the um, the game and three D space? Um, in terms of like well, usually if we're doing like a heads up display or we're doing something like this inventory screen, um, it's relatively two D mixed with three D, so the character would be a three D there'd be two D elements. Um, Usually the content is sitting on top in like a 3D plane, but in terms of us exporting, um, we like using just pings. So we'll export files as pings with transparent backgrounds. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, depends on the engine, like Unreal has, uh, well, I guess Unreal and Unity both have like nine sliced. Uh, so we can import textures in specific formats that are nine slice uh, compatible. So if you're like gonna make a dialogue and you want the edges and the corners to be anchored and stretch in certain places or scale or tile, it'll just do it. And you generally um, the person doing that, or is it that you hand off these files? Usually and hand off the files. Do you ever yeah, hand it off so. and you're like, oh wow, they really took that apart in a different way than we expected? <laughs> it's yeah. It it depends on how they want to end up implementing it. Um, I, I mean, it, stuff like that happens all the time where people like decide that they want to tweak the art direction a little bit and so you know it's it's their game they get they're free to do whatever they want mm -hmm. um it, they, like it's their it's their content so yeah um but yeah sometimes that happens will um things will get implemented differently sometimes people will come back and ask us to make updates to things because um we uh need to make edits to something or they decided something needs to t tile horizontally instead of vertically things like that um, somebody's asking um, why pings over SVGs mm -hmm. um, most engines don't support SVGs yeah vectors at all yeah they don't support vectors at all um, if you if you want to import vectors workable live vectors into like with Bezier curves into an engine you have to write it yourself <laughs> You have to write the code to render it. Uh, Phil mentioned that he made a few changes to his submission. We'll actually take a look at it in a little bit, but it, um, I see that he actually made some changes based on our feedback oh, to cool. like uh, making the logo just a little bit more simpler. Um, and mentioned a little bit about using a font from Typekit, Memoriam Pro, one of my favorites, actually. Oh, so nice. I wanted to give Memoriam Pro a shout out <laughs> since Philip brought it up. Typekit is great. Typekit is great. I work on Typekit. <laughs> oh, okay. I didn't know that. <laughs> Full disclosure. I'm not pandering. I'm <laughs> <laughs> so shout out to the Typekit team. Yeah, for sure. 
font management is not fun. We should talk about it. Yeah, Typekit ma makes it a lot less of a pain. That's, which is nice, because I hate sitting around digging through fonts. I just want to find stuff and move on. Do you use Typekit through Creative Cloud? Do you ever do. use Typekit for designing one of the like games that you design? Um, I probably have. Um, I don't know off the top of my head if I actually did or not, but I'm sure I have. Uh, what does this need to be? Oh yeah, you need to be able to drop equipment. So we need that in there. Actually, I shouldn't do that. I should just do this. I'm wondering, Ian, um, if I should start wrapping some of this stuff up as you're getting close to being done with that and start talking about making icons and a couple other... Yeah, you, you want to show off some of the... Like, we can show the fin what the finished HUD looks like. I mean, yeah, I think it's... And we can talk a little bit about icons and stuff. Um, we'll, f we'll fast forward a little bit here just so... Yeah, I think it's good. I think scope. it's good to, to get a couple, a couple screens in here. So, I, I you know, um, I talked about kind of a little bit of how... Let me turn this background layer off. Um, how I kind of started putting together some of this stuff. Um, these these notch marks. I, this is these are like usually things I'll I'll talk to you and I go. Should we put some notch marks in there? It's like yeah, let's try it out. Um, I'll go ahead and and alter that up. Um, I started putting in my basic shapes here. I started getting in all this stuff. I set up as layer styles so I can copy and paste this background color into everything. And what I do is I put my fill to zero. I'll control my opacity and my color tone here, and I do inner stroke. Um, so that, that style I can just copy layer style and then paste it to anything I want to, um, which I will be using that as a frame color mm -hmm. for, for a lot of other things. So um, it's, it's kind of good to establish that, um, tweak that. But yeah, let's, let's actually turn this off and I'll kind of show what the final, final HUD looked like here. And we can kind of go through some of these things. All right. So the candy bar <laughs> that's in here, um, I I I use a, something I probably haven't talked about yet. I use a lot of reference, like a lot, a lot of reference. So I definitely pulled in and and some spree candies <laughs> from online to just see kind of where lighting falls on some of this stuff. Nick and I actually talked about this, and he he was like. What do you what do you want these candies to look like? And I'm like, I don't know, like Smarties or Sprees or something. And we were kind of going back and forth because I just liked the the shine highlight on there. Yeah. And and Nick did a glorious job of making those look shiny as heck. So there there are <laughs> definitely tactics you can use to make these like make make UI standoff inner inner glows with overlay blending modes on them are really really key for like making things just kind of pop with a little bit of outline around them these ones i made one smart object and just color tone shifted it all the way up and just stacked it did the same thing here i also love the fact that he made them little, uh, a little off skew and mm -hmm. then yeah. made the outline of the ui also follow yeah. it is really cool. and so you can imagine like as they drop down or get pulled off they kind of bloop, stack yeah. and like rattle yeah. um they can shake and they little, can shake. little candy flakes can fall off. So would yeah. you animate something like that and show? Like uh, sometimes. Yeah. It, it really depends on, like, like, like a lot of game studios have a lot of talented animators, too. Yeah. And you can literally go, like, you know, they fall and they kind of rattle on top of you. are like, gotcha. Got it. Like, yeah. it, got it. it doesn't need to go past that, right? And they're like, I, I totally know what you're talking about. Um, some of this stuff, uh, you know, I created a little candy down here for our little candy counter. Um, this is actually a, another Google Blocks thing. Took me about five minutes to throw together Google Blocks and another five minutes to paint over. <clears throat> and so you can imagine how fast you can pump out icons uh, using using just simple tools like this. Actually, Ian started off by drawing these in XD, and then I copied them over, and then I kind of altered them and changed the backgrounds a little bit to kind of mm -hmm. fit in what looked good in the scene. But here again, we're using those color contrasts, right? Our purple and blues for the background here and our greens for the front here, and it really just kind of pops. You can see when you pull out, you can still see them pretty clearly. Pop out of the scene pretty nicely. And then we have our little little Alice head in here, <laughs> and I kind of paint it over a little bit, and she doesn't. you don't need to see the XP bars on them, so it's just kind of a little bit smaller. And Alice is truly terrifying. She's, <laughs> she's scaring you? <laughs> Alice is the best. There's no, no eyes. And I put a little bit of like bubbles and stuff in here. You can imagine these be little animations yeah. that are subtle as, as the health bar is going down. They could even react differently as the bar is getting smaller, like shake a lot or 
so things that 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 you can do so um yeah it's kind of uh i know i had to fast forward it and said and here we go voila um it's done uh but this pretty much this is something that would this is what it would look like when we'd hand it to a client and go like here are all the elements what do you think um and overall we probably would spend a couple days doing something like this yeah um, putting this together there's going to be rough edges we haven't cleaned up the PSDs we literally send them a screenshot going thumbs up thumbs down um, so it is really as simple as that you send them a screenshot or do you you know present them like what does it look like to deliver something to a client like this um, hopefully by the time I deliver this it's no grand reveal Okay. They know, yeah. they see some things in They've progress. We, yeah, We've already picked apart wireframes. We've gone back yeah. and forth about um, content and, and things like that and, and what we want and um, as well as talking about uh, gameplay and, and things like that. So. Yeah, by that point, they've probably seen this. Yeah, yeah. And they're like, okay, yeah, approved. And so by the time they're seeing this... It's not a surprise. They're like, yeah. they're like, oh, that's juicy. That's yeah. that. We like how that looks. It's got that's uh, that's a. We're just talking. These are about layers of information. This is why we keep even when we send it to them, we'll send it to them grayscale. Yeah. We don't want them to think about colors at this yeah. point. Placement's good. Are we look? Well, actually, I should say not with the art. With the, the sometimes wires. with the art too. Sometimes with the art, like because we've done sketches too, where mm -hmm. we'll like uh, take pieces of the wires and do sketch overs yeah. where we're just inferring the art style. Um, and not necessarily um, uh, going full out and getting all details in there. Um, so this is the inventory screen wired out. Um, Let me go back to Ian's. <clears throat> so I've got like little representations of uh, icons in here um, and our stats, smarts, hyper, and scary, because why not? Um, and then a grid for inventory. So this is like all the stuff in your backpack. Um, so you might have like candy and all kinds of other stuff in here, and then the slots on the right are your or on the left. There you go. There I go mixing up left and right again. Uh, <laughs> on the left are the uh, your inventory slots. So this is like your head and your chest and your gloves and boots or your weapon or whatever. Um, and so at this point, it's ready to get mocked up. And uh, Nick's got some 3D icons and stuff, and we can kind of show like how those things kind of get integrated into like uh, what you would expect to see in an RPG. Now at this stage, um, I, again, back to blocks because it's simple for me. I took elements that were from all of my 3D files that would make icons, feet icons, hand icons, head icons. I took some weapons from some of the the Alice and from from Kevin. I took the head from the cat. <laughs> Because who knows, you might have, uh, have pet pets. followers. Yeah. Pet followers. You get uh, them as drops, and then uh, like you defeat monsters or a boss, and then you get a special pet. <laughs> so this is a fantastic way. I'll go in and I'll make an icon sheet with a with a green background, so I can literally just knock them out real quickly when I when I get into yeah. Photoshop. And I'll just go in and I'll I'll go in and take the angles that I want, and then screenshot it, yeah. pull it in, take an angle that I want, screenshot it, pull it in, and pretty much after after that's done, I'll set up a file that looks slimy up uh, pretty much looks like this this is like the cleaned up icons and yep. and nick has done some uh just simple uh layer style effects on top of them just to give them a little rim lighting and make them look yep. a little more so juicy each one gets a little hue sat alterations to them and they're all smart objects so i'm i'm actually going non-destructive at this point in case i want to scale them a little differently um, or the client needs them. Or the in client a needs them in a different size. Because now I'm thinking a little bit more ahead. Like we're doing some icons, but these they might go. They might throw these all away. Then most likely they will. They're like that's why we don't like all these things were just pulled from things that I have. Because as I start mocking up this inventory screen, you'll see that it's not it's it's not about what the actual content of the icons are. It's about displaying how they look and conveying that to the client. Uh, so some of these, all I did was put a, a layer style on the folder that they're all in, and that's an inner glow. So you can see how an inner glow with overlay makes them push mm -hmm. off the screen. Nathan said uh, the streams made him want to get an Oculus set. <laughs> <laughs> Good. <laughs> um, a little bit of uh, color overlay to kind of push them back a little bit, um, and I always do a little outer glow to push them push off. Yeah, you know, a little bit of something. So when I when I pull these guys into my file um, 
they'll they'll be all set up and I can just plop plop the icons in. And and obviously I've rotated these so that they're kind of at the right, right size, right angle. They don't have to be perfect. You can see these are just chunky blocks in here. I don't yeah. you know go go into too much detail. Um, got the cubes. We got the machete there. With the um, sriracha little, sauce little pieces on it. of candy. As you can see, guys, it's sriracha. <laughs> this is a sphere, and then I just make a little square and just pull items. It, you know, it's like it, it just has to convey the shape. It's like it looks like a piece of candy. Um, we're not, you know, we're not trying to do the world's best piece of candy. We're just trying to get a silhouette with some coloring yeah. down and some. And and then of course, all these have just a little bit of rim lighting on them, right? Just a little something to make them bounce off. A little something, something. A little something, something. So I think at this point, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up. We've we've we don't have a ton of time. We do have to pick yeah, we, submissions we at the end. Yeah, we have to take a look at a few more submissions. So, would you? How about this? How about I show the inventory screen and I go backwards on it? And I just kind yeah, of describe some that. of the processes and and and, uh, and why we did it that way. Nathan asked if this was a real game being made. Um, Nick and I built all of this stuff in three days. Three uh, D assets, Photoshop files, XD files, um, idea. Logo, iteration, color sheets, style guides, fonts, three days. Um, it's three hard days. But but no. No, it's not a real game being no, made. No, it's not a real um, game. And, unless we want to put it up on Kickstarter and you want to fund us, uh, sure, we'll make it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so here here would be sort of what the final inventory screen looks like. So I kind of got, got that going. I've got, if we remember from yesterday, I did my paint over of Kevin in the middle here. <laughs> Kyle says, onwards to Kickstarter. <laughs> <laughs> so if we flip over just to just to my screen real fast. Get that. Oh, no problem. Boom. There we go. Um, so you can see this would be kind of the look and feel of the... So this is pulling some of the elements that from our HUD. Right? We have these kind of skewed mm. squares. Now, I have skewed squares here, but see how I also have them gridded? Because this actually has to work and function as a grid. So to kind of cheat it, I skewed the inner grid, but the outer one is just a flat up square, so we don't have to worry about those. This is, this is one of those late night uh, uh, Nick genius moments where he's like, I want this to be a grid, but I want it to still feel like the other squares and not be all perfect. Uh, and he just did that, and I was like, that's brilliant, just keep that. <laughs> so as you can see, I'm pulling in elements, if you've watched all three of the videos, this background behind here is our start screen. I just yeah. pulled that behind there. Now, if the client wants to go ahead and make a 3D background behind there, like I said, just conveying the idea. Um, these are elements and shapes from from our HUD, and this is the one I did yesterday for the for the character the character, character screen. screen. So I'm just going to use use Kevin in there again. Um, working off of Ian's uh, mocks. I did the same thing. I took his mocks in, put a screen overlay on it, sized them in there, kind of got them to the right spot. One alteration I definitely did, I drew these icons in here for the smarts, hyper, and scary. I thought they were kind of nice. And if you if you have a tool tip on some of the stats of these items, you could have these icons accompanying it next to it. I thought they were kind of nice. Big, chunky stats. Um, here you can see, for those who have played role-playing games or are familiar with that, we have levels of rarity done in the frame. So this is this is a green item, this is a more rare purple item. Um, and you can see all the icons from the other sheet that we used, right? I just threw these in here, I gave some of them, this would be like a poison sword, right? A little, little green on here instead of the blood. Um, <clears throat> color shifting, just doing simple color shifts for the shoes to just give us variations and some stuff really just to fill it out so the client's like, oh, this is what it would look like. This is how I envision when I've got items in there. We break the frame. I think that looks kind of neat. Yeah. We did that on the skill bar, too, in um, in the HUD. Yeah. Uh, and we wanted to carry that over just because it just looks really cool. Yeah, here. The it HUD is, the skill bar does it as well. This is something Nick and I have always wanted to do in games um, that we've worked on in the past. But uh Oddly enough, that little thing is very difficult to pull off when you're dealing with tons of assets of varying sizes and mm -hmm. different backgrounds and all kinds of stuff. It's something you have to decide early on, and um, it, it can be difficult to pull off. So, and, and a lot of these, like I said, I did, I, I, I do this like so. I I put the icons together outside of this file because I I'm I'm very very. Uh, 
uh, probably proficient at this point of understanding what my where my values are, where my blacks and whites are. So when I dump it into the file, I'm already really close to where those value tones are. My icons are gonna probably, there. I've done everything in blocks at this point, so there's no reason the style should look different when I put them in. Yeah. Um, I'm put. Th these don't carry the art direction anyways. The 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 backgrounds behind here do, so I can do those in the file and then dump the icons in with confidence. Um, you know, the paint over from yesterday. This is this is all just sort of a culmination of everything. I, I wanted to make sure some of these greens were active on things. You know, like like so. There's still a little bit of focal point up here. You know, I press the shoulder buttons to go between inventory and skills. Yeah, I actually uh, I have a wireframe of skills here as well um, and I can show like a little prototype um, I, I wired this up real quick just so we could bounce back and forth between these screens should, um, we, flip to your, should we flip to your screen for that to the, yeah. for the wireframes yeah yeah so you, you, you so I just made this home real quick um, and uh, so if I just click on Kevin and the uh, HUD it's gonna go over to the inventory screen as if you hit a button, whatever that is, we're just kind of hand waving that for now. Um, and it would open up inventory and you could swap back and forth between inventory and skills. Can you play so it? if I hit play, if it'll let me. It's not letting me, why? It's not letting you hit play? Mm -mm. I don't know why. Maybe because I didn't save it or something? Mm. Maybe in the meantime, we go ahead and take a look at the last sure. submissions, and then we Let's can do that. close out with taking a look at that. So we have three additional uh, submissions, and then we get to pick a winner for today. We'll start with Book Mine first. Um, taking a look at this again, our theme this uh, today is um, entertainment, um, and we've got some really great submissions here. I love how the color scheme that we have going on and more purples. Mm -hmm. Um, there's this really nice loader here at the bottom. I think that's pretty interesting. <laughs> they, they're kind of like, we're able to make that happen in the prototype. It's by like a uh, movie marquee. Yeah. Or like, like a sign marquee. Yeah. Like a sign marquee. Um, find the best theater. So uh, find the nearest theater. Book the seat you like. So it's got this kind of like really nice intro section. And then search theater near me the map that pops up let's take a look at what some of these anchor points might look like oh this is really nice yeah um, I like that interesting way to display uh, different different upcoming shows uh, kind of having that diagonal um, I like how they kind of alternate the purple and the green mm -hmm. maybe perhaps staying kind of in the same color family that we've been looking <laughs> at <Yeah>. <laughs> I've noticed that <laughs> so you find inspiration sometimes subconsciously even <laughs> in what's happening around you um, Going into one of the detail views, it looks like there's there's it's a little hard to read in here. I think this is where maybe the the multiple colors break down a little bit. So uh, some feedback would be around adding some color contrast, mm -hmm. maybe put blocking in some um, like something in the background, maybe a solid color in the black background. Take some of your colors, uh, the RGB values or the hex values, and go to Adobe Cooler, oh, <laughs> K U L E R, yeah. and find some complementary colors and pull from that. I love that app. Yep, it's great. It is great. Um, and then going, I think a place to choose your seat, that theater view, which is I think something you see a lot on desktop, but not as much on, on mobile, but this is a nice application of it. Go to checkout. We talked a little bit about checkout screens earlier. So 13 screens there, overall really nice submission. I think yeah. I enjoy this. <laughs> the logo is the very logo. funny. <laughs> <laughs> the logo is great. And I like um, the amount of time they put into the intro and the mm -hmm. setup here. Yeah, yeah. It's a good The submission. staging is uh, very nice. I like the subtle blurs in the background too. That was cute. Yeah, and I think these diagonals are a really nice touch. Mm -hmm. It adds a lot of motion to the entire app. Excellent. So the next, the next submission here, we have, um, it looks like, is this a karaoke app? A music app. It's a music app. Um, so we have, uh, I think it's a really nice color scheme, about seven mm -hmm. screens here. Let's see for the click through. Um, there we go. Um, nice way to display like multiple song lists right here. It's uh, clean. Uh, I like the contrast that's happening. This color mm -hmm. seems really nice, mm -hmm. feels refreshing. This kind of like red hot chili peppers, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like asterisks here in the top. Let's see, 
what happens actually. So the, the asterisk actually brings you back to the, the main landing page. Let's see what this looks like for videos, audio. Overall, a really nice clean yeah. app. It would be interesting to see a little bit more detail, I yeah. think, but yeah, yeah. overall. You could also grab some more um, photos just to break up that grid box yep. a little bit and just yeah. drag it in. Which, yeah. by the way, good, easy to do in XD. Mm -hmm. Got yeah. a bunch of photos and just drag them in and it dumps them in. I love that feature Absolutely. as well. Yeah, it's amazing how much like that can help with the storytelling and it like really even working yeah. with like a client or something. Yeah. It sometimes yep. feels like it's just like filling something in, but really you can tell a story that way and help Just them. what we did with the icons. Exactly. Yeah. If they're yeah. all the same icon, it kind of doesn't convey the, the idea. It kind of yeah. show what it kind of, close to a snapshot of what it would actually look yeah. like. And we could even take some of those icons and export them and bring them over as uh, pings as long as they're all the same size and I could dump them directly into XD and you can see what yep. it looked like live. Yeah. So moving on to the next submission, we have Gamers Hood. Um, made by gamers in the similar <laughs> theme mm -hmm. to the world we're in right now um sign up nice sign up flow i like, I like that the, up. that's very clean it is really clean i like the spacing it's mm -hmm. nice and it's got a lot of it's airy room. Yeah. yeah good font choices mm -hmm. um take a selfie <laughs> <laughs> it's mario i'm not mario don't <laughs> but if, if i was um i'd be using this app um, yeah, overall this is feeling really, really nice so far. It's got a, a, a airy kind of feel to the actual entire user mm -hmm. flow. Um, let's see what happens. The messaging. ability to do messaging. I like this, how they've actually incorporated this into this particular user flow. And what happens? I think, oh, there we go, go back. A quick edit was also an option. Let's see if we can. <laughs> they've got me and you in there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, just sense, note, I, I just sense pandering. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm yeah. totally open to it. <laughs> Flattery will get you everywhere. Yep. <laughs> yep. There we go. So that's actually our last submission for today. We're giving away um, CC subscription. Mm -hmm. And I will leave it to you, two judges, to, um, to discuss amongst yourselves who you think should be today's winner. Oh, there was that one. Was it ballet? Ballet app. Yeah, the ballet app Which was the ballet app. I oh, he updated yeah, it. He actually updated Changed it. The yeah. Logo. He. That's um, very classy. Yeah. Simplified the logo, which I think was a really nice yeah. touch. Yep. Yeah. I, I like mean, that. from a graphic design standpoint, as well as the um, just overall flow design and stuff, that was very well executed. I kind of feel like that's the winner. I, I think so. This yep. is the winner. Yeah. I think yeah. So. Well, excellent. So, congratulations to I think it was Philip. Philip, congratulations! You just won a CC. Good job. Yeah. Really nice work, everybody today. I think the yeah. submissions yep. are really, really um, awesome. So I, I look forward to the seeing what comes out the next episode. Yeah, yep. it'll be interesting. We'll be tuned in from home. <laughs> <laughs> so I actually got this working so I can uh, swap back and forth between inventory and skills now. Um, so this is the inventory screen that Nick was showing arted up and then we don't have an arted version of the, the skills, but um, this was like kind of an example of like how you, um, if you remember on the HUD, um, you want to pull up the HUD screen? Sure. Yeah, we have that. both screens up. Um, on the HUD, you've got the skill bar down at the bottom, and so then the skill bar is represented again here vertically. Um, and so this would be kind of like how you edited your skills, mm -hmm. and maybe there's a skill tree over here, and you get to pick different skills and stuff like that. It's important to note we we are ha <laughs> we didn't create a, yeah. all the little parts of a whole game. You, you so. can see there's lore of Mipsum in there uh, and stuff. By the way, that would be another great feature for XD is to have a lore, lore of Mipsum generator. Oh, <laughs> yep, that, is, that's that would be good. Yeah, I'd love to be able to just drag a text box and have it filled with text. That would be great. One one level up would be like gamer zipsum. Yeah, of course. Right. Or, or, hip, or hipster hipster ipsum. Hipster ipsum. It would be nice if there's options. Yes. Bacon ipsum. All the ipsums. <laughs> Let's have all the ipsums. There's a San Francisco ipsum. Is there really? Is mm -hmm. there? It's, it's, it just says organic. Uh, <laughs> That's it's great. just like it's a like bunch of. Names. It's like yeah. a bunch of. It's a bunch of like. Yeah, Seattle ipsum. It's Seattle just grunge and yeah, yeah, yeah. And Starbucks. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, so this is the uh, final set of flows uh, all done. Let me prototype focus so I can't zoom in. Let me 
we've got all our start screens and we've got all of our character creation screens and our HUD and inventory and skill screens and Nick's beautiful art. It's a good time maybe to remind everyone of like what our social media links are and everything. Sure. If someone yeah. wants to like check us out, follow us. Um, we're we're also fairly responsive of like answering questions and stuff like that. If yeah. you guys want to know how to get into the industry, um, uh, if you want to know like if you're already in the industry and you're like you're doing something else in it and you kind of like UI interests you, I have actually had a couple people are like I'm actually thinking about I'd like to transition to UI. Like yeah. it's actually kind of fascinating. It kind of bridges the gap between my desire to do game design mm -hmm. and do game art. Uh, so for for us on on Twitter, we're we're just uh, Beholder Design yeah, for both Beholder of us. Design. At Beholder Design. Uh, my personal is at Poopy Socks. And I'm at Pixel on Twitter. P i x h e l l. Oh, already. Thank you. Oh, awesome. Right there. Thanks, everyone. We we should have been smart and actually just put it on the back. Like everyone else was <laughs> yeah, really like, smart and yeah. we're really dumb, and we didn't put it on the back of our computers, which would have been so stupid. Yeah. Print. Print. had all this here. Yeah. What's print? Um, yeah. So you can find us on LinkedIn under Beholder Design. We're on Facebook on, as Beholder Design and uh, our website, BeholderDesign.com. You can also see all the 3D models that we created for this on Sketchfab. Oh, They're yeah. up on Sketchfab. Yeah. So if you just search for Beholder Design on Sketchfab, uh, it those these models you can actually we have them for you you can download them play with them yeah mm -hmm. paint materials on them yeah, we made them all downloadable so you can check it out um, and somebody asked earlier if the files are going to be available and we're going to make those available awesome. too so yeah um, and then also Behance <laughs> yeah also <laughs> yeah, design yeah we on we're Beholder Design on Behance so backslash Beholder Design um, yeah. and then we have we have personal accounts too that have a couple extra like illustrations and stuff on yeah. them but Things for the personal most, work and stuff if you want to yeah. check it out but for the most part, uh, all that work is kind of yeah. congealed together on Beholder yeah. Design. And our tiny Instagram. Thanks, Bridget. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't we, we we haven't really been very active on Instagram, yeah. but I am I am poopy socks on Instagram as well. Oh, yeah. excellent. Yep. So you you stuck with it for multiple just every it's yeah. poopy socks I, everywhere. I kind of yeah, it's like <laughs> when you invest in an ecosystem, it's just it's <laughs> It's just I thought done. it might have been like a one-time thing. You're like, okay. It was a one-time thing, and it, it just, just it, it, just it just branched just off. Yeah. <laughs> I've been Pixel forever too, but it's just not as funny. <laughs> it's not as childish, I guess. Yeah. It's gothy childish. Yeah, I guess. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, this has been really exciting getting to to learn a little bit more about the like how you design for video games, how you use different products work together um, anything else like any closing advice for folks who are interested in not only getting into maybe UI design but getting into video game design because I think yeah. that in in itself it's a very unique like subset yeah, of design it is it is it's a lot different than a lot of uh, traditional UX and things like that um, I mean from my perspective I would just say practice a lot um, uh, deconstruct things that you like and um, kind of figure out why you like those things or what makes those things interesting or fun um, play lots of games um, check out pop culture movies read books um, all that like everything that you get inspirationally is gonna come from everywhere um, whether it's travel to a new city or um, uh, watching a new movie or reading a new book all of that stuff is gonna influence kind of how you think about things in general um, and then, yeah, just practice, learn software, get get fast at using the software and, and using, you know, basic principles, you know, rule of thirds, good graphic design, um, learn how to paint, that type of stuff. Uh, everything you can cobble together to make your skill set more robust will just give you more to bring to the table. So I think for me, it's been really inspirational to just understand that it, like, a lot of what you did is really driven by your passion. Mm -hmm. Like it wasn't, mm -hmm. you know, like you weren't like, hey, I'm going to look to see which industry makes the most sense for my skill right, set. Right. Yeah. You followed your passion. Yeah. 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 Since we were kids, right? Yeah. <laughs> we're still just being kids, but now, you know, we we know how to make milestones. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we, we know what a Gantt chart is. Yeah. <laughs> Well, uh, thanks so much for joining us. I, it's been a pleasure. I, I really appreciate Same. you um, uh, being the first guest for my first two episodes hosting <laughs> yeah. and being very. Hope patient. we weren't too harsh. I really yeah. appreciate. It. Yeah. No, you've been great, and you did a good job. I'm feeling really stoked and excited actually to learn more about video game um, design and actually video games in general. I'm yeah. gonna start playing some more now. Excellent. Yeah. Yep. So thanks, thanks so much for being here. Any, any last words on your last episode this week? Uh, thanks yeah. thanks to Adobe for having us out, having us do this. It's been yeah. phenomenal. It's been a great experience. It's been um, fantastic. It, it, like I said, anyone who wants to ask us more questions, please hit us up on social media. 
Um, we Beholder is also, we're constantly hiring. Uh, so if you're already a UI UX person in the video game space, we're always looking for talented contractors. Yeah. Any of you ha have projects you want to work on and you need uh, help, let us know. Yep. Excellent. Well, that's it from us today. Uh, thanks so much. Thanks, everyone. Bye.